in this presentation, you will learn the trapezoid mid segment or midpoint theorem. A is the trapezoid, right? E is the midpoint of AC, F is the midpoint of BD. But we need to notice that AB as a side and CD as a side, they are both referred to as the basis of the trapezoid. Then AC as a side and BD as a side, are referred to as the legs of the trapezoid. Now, the theorem itself states that if a line connects the midpoints of the two legs of a trapezoid, A, B, C, D, then it is parallel to the basis and its length is half the sum of the lengths of the basis, right? The model is this trapezoid. Then in symbolic form, we are simply saying if AB is parallel to CD, AE is equals to EC, and BF is equals to FD, then EF is parallel to CD, and EF is half the sum of the basis, that is AB plus CD. Here, note that we are saying AE, the E is repeating, that means E is the midpoint. Here, the F is repeating, that means F is the midpoint of BD. Right. Now, for us to demonstrate this theorem, we have to look at what we are given, right? And then try to think how best can we come up with the useful constructions. Now, let us understand the additional constructions. What I'm going to do is looking at the parallel lines, what came to mind was I need possibly to come up with some triangle or a triangle, then work with those triangles until possibly I demonstrate that EF is parallel to CD, right? So to do that, I had to join from A through F to G. Now the shaded triangle is the major triangle that will allow me to say EF is parallel to CD, right? Now, but, what it takes now is if you look at the triangle on its own, we don't know whether AF is equal to FG. So we need to use these two triangles, ABF and FDG, to show that AF is equal to FG. But for us to do that, we can't do that using um, similarity of triangles because similar triangles are not always congruent. So at this point, we are forced to demonstrate that A, B, F as a triangle is congruent to F, D, G as a triangle. Therefore, to do that, we need to recall the five tests for congruent triangles. That is side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, right angle, hypotenuse side. So from these five, we choose one that suits our situation according to what we know. We know that BF and FD are equal. This is from the original trapezoid, right? Then from there, we don't have any side, we know that they are equal. Then we are saying, uh, this angle and this angle are equal vertically opposite. And we note that CG is parallel to what? To AB. Therefore, the test that we are supposed to use should be angle, angle, side. Because you only have one side, the other two triangles you can have them. Now, let us go into details. So I've separated the hypothesis, then the conclusion. Right? So to start with the fact that we want to show that these two triangles, they are marked red and blue, are congruent. I'm still putting a question mark because we don't know. Therefore, we are saying uh, if we look at the given parallel lines, we can safely uh, come up with an angle or angles that are equal, isn't it? And these parallel lines are given in the original uh, trapezoid. Therefore, you see that um, the angle 
that I'm going to mark right away as um, angle BAF, BAF, right? This angle is um, congruent angle DGF, DGF, right? These two angles are congruent. Why? Because these are alternate interior angles. Uh, then I look for another one and the other one, obviously, let me try to maintain this as they are. Then the other one, uh, this angle is equal to this one, vertically opposite, right? So now I have two angles. What I am left with is the side, the side Already, I told you that uh, BF is equal to um, FD. That is given information to us. So as such, this is all what it means. We are simply saying this side is equal to that one, right? So I now have the three um, components to allow me to conclude that the two given triangles AFB is congruent to triangle GFD. That is the conclusion that we now have here. These two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. I think you have seen that. Now, that will give us now uh, the right to change focus. The fact that those two triangles are congruent you know that corresponding sides, corresponding angles are also congruent. From there, we can safely conclude that um, the AFFG that we wanted to show that they are equal, now we know they are equal. Why? Because there are corresponding parts of congruent triangles are also congruent, right? That is the main idea why we are proving that those two triangles are congruent, right? With that, from that now, we are changing focus. We are now focusing on the bigger triangle that is A, um, C, G. That is where our focus is. The fact that now we know that uh, these two sides are equal from the previous um, showing, then we can safely conclude that the line EF, right, is the what is the mid segment. That means it is joining the midpoints of two sides of uh, the triangle ACG, right? So that is the definition of that. Then from there, if it is the mid segment or midpoint, then we can conclude that EF is parallel to CG but saying CG is the same as CD because it's simply an extended line. And what allows us to give that conclusion, we are simply based on the triangle midpoint theorem, right? Looking at our focus triangle, right? Once we have done that, then that means we have achieved this first problem. What is left is to show um, that EF is equal to half the sum AB plus CD, right? Now, looking at AF, remember, when you apply the theorem of uh, the midpoint theorem, it doesn't end there to simply say EF is parallel to CG. It says and EF is half CG. So we are going to write that down, which is this one, EF is equals to half CG, still from the um, triangle midpoint theorem, right? So if this is the case, we look at CG, we look at where we want to arrive at. The half is there, but CG is not what we want. We want AB plus CD. Then if you look at CG, that means it can be written in terms of two segments that is CD and DG. That is exactly what I'm going to do here. CG is equal to the sum of CD plus DG, right? Once I'm there, I'm happy 
now that my CD has come into um, light. But what I don't want is this DG, right? But if you look at the DG, DG in the triangle FDG, which is congruent to triangle ABF. DG is the side that corresponds to AB. So since the triangles are congruent, that means DG is equals to AB, right? Then this is the statement here. Since corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? So now the DG can be substituted by AB, thereby I think I'll be having what I needed. Then from there, I'm going to substitute first CG in 10, right? When I substitute CG in 10, what I get is this one, but there is still that's DG. Then I substitute in 12, 11, that is DG for AB. And eventually I arrive where I was aiming to arrive at to say that's half the sum of the bases of the trapezoid. So with that, if you look at number eight and number 13, that means our proof is complete. Kudos to you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.